90% of the machines running on cloud computing are Linux. You cannot make any excuses not to learn Linux. And it doesn't matter what type of engineer you are, DevOps, cloud, SRE, software, data engineer, you're gonna touch Linux at least some point in your day, week, month, or year as an engineer. This video is gonna give you a practical foundation on basic fundamental Linux terminal commands that you need to know. And the last scenario at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how we can combine all of the commands to make a practical real world scenario where you would utilize everything I'm gonna show you. But let's get started. The first area I wanna focus on is finding your bearings in the Linux terminal. So the first command I'm going to run is PWD, which stands for print working directory which essentially just tells us where we are in the terminal. Now, if I want to find out the contents of the directory that we're currently in, we're going to type in ls. Now, what this does is it shows us everything that is currently in our directory. But what if you want to find out more details about these files? We can type in ls-la. And what we see here is a lot more information on everything within this directory, like the permissions, for example, over here. Now, because that's taking up a lot of space, if you want to clear your screen, you just type in clear and press enter. Now we've found our bearings, what we're going to move on to is basic navigation of the Linux terminal. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new directory called practice. So we type in mkdir, which stands for make directory, and we, whatever you want to name that directory, you type it in afterwards. Now, we've created that directory, right? So we'll just check here. Now, as you can see, that new directory does not exist where I currently am. So I need to move into there. So the next command you'll run is CD. And then you type in the name of that directory, which is practice. And if you want to, you can type in tab to autocomplete. Now, because there's two directories in here that start with PR, that isn't enough information to understand. So it tells you what is the present. So we just type in A and it's going to autocomplete and then press enter. So now we're in our new directory, but what if we want to go back one level? Well, that's easy enough. We just type in cd dot dot and enter. And we're back where we originally were. Now we're just going to go back into that directory. And another command that you can run is cd minus, which takes you straight back to the previous location also. So now that you're comfortable actually creating directories and moving around those directories, what you need to now move on to is the essential file operations. So you need to know how to create files, rename and remove, etc. Now, before I move on to the next section, I want to ask yourself, can you imagine getting three DevOps job offers with no degree, no experience, 19 years of age, eventually becoming a senior? A lot of people say you can't do it without a degree. You can't do it without experience. It's all lies. Hamid did it at 19 and he's now a senior platform engineer. Now you guys know me, I don't promote boot camps at all. Why? I don't think they help people. They don't offer post boot camp support. They don't regularly update their content and they don't offer interview practice and constant regular calls with their community. But this is not sponsored. I am not being paid to add this segment into my video. I genuinely just believe the product is very good. Don't take my word of advice for it. Go look into the people at Codeco. They have over 450 members and they're growing rapidly. They currently are expanding across the world with five people already in the community in America. I'll drop a link down in the description for you guys to check it out. So the first command I'm gonna show you is touch. Now if I type in touch and then create a text file, that's all we do, we create a text file. Now that we've created this file, we can go into it with Vim, which is a text-based editor as part of the Linux ecosystem. And if you want to type something in, press I to insert, and we'll type in here, test. Press escape to come out of the editor, colon, WQ, which does a right quit, and an exclamation mark to exit the file and save. What if we want to copy those files to another one? We'll create a new file called backup.txt. We'll type in the copy command, which is cp. We'll type in the, the file name we want to back up, which is test, and what we want to back it up to, which is the backup.txt. Now, if we go into this file, there we go. We can see we've copied everything from one destination to another using two new files. And that's great, but I'm feeling now that I want to rename that file. So we can use the mv command. So we take backup. And we want to name this new backup dot text. And then we can go into this new backup. And there we go. 
I'm bored of these files. I don't actually want them anymore, so I want to remove them. And simply enough, we type in RM, which stands for remove, and a new backup. And it's gone, just like that. Now we're going to move on to output redirection, which is all tailored towards understanding how we can focus on outputs. Now, as we remember in the earlier exercise, we have our list command, which shows us the contents of the directory and more information. Now, what if I want to move all of this information to another text file? Well, that's simple enough. We can do add in our nice little arrow here. We'll call this directory contents. Then let's take a look. And there it is. Everything that we just listed, we sent to a file. Colon Q to quit. Now, what if I just want to add some more information very quickly to this file? Well, that's where the command echo comes in. And we can type additional info. Use the same arrow again, but twice, which appends two files instead of redirecting output. Type in our file name, and there we go. Let's open this file. Scroll down, we have additional info right at the bottom. Colon Q to quit. You see that I'm using Vim to go into all these files, like that's great, we can go into Vim, we can edit anything we need to, but what if I don't want to go in and press more buttons just to see how to get in and how to exit Vim, which can be annoying and people can forget. Well, that's where the cat command comes in. So if we type in cat directory contents, everything that's in that file has now just been outputted to our terminal. Now cat is great, it's a command that I use almost every day in my job. But there are other commands that are very good for viewing file contents, which is going to be the next exercise. Now, I have my file here, app.log, which is a basic log file with minimal information. So we've got four lines in there. Now, log files can be huge. You can find log files with hundreds or even thousands of lines. What if I only just want to see the first two? Well, that's very simple. We just type in head and then dash two for the number app.log, enter, and I get my first two. But this isn't actually the information that I was looking for. The information I'm looking for, I think, is somewhere else in the file. Now, if you already know how many lines there are, you kind of guesstimate what you want to look for. So if I type in tell dash two app.log, it gives me the final two lines. This is essential for checking logs and configuration files, which is probably what you're going to be doing a lot on Linux. My personal favorite for the next session is going to be show you how to use pipes. Pipes are essential on the Linux command line and they become even more essential when you're learning how to script tools like Bash. Now if you wonder what the pipe is, it's this little command right here and it is beautiful. I'm going to show you exactly what it does. Now pipes connect commands together. They take output from one command and they feed it into the other. So this creates a powerful command of combinations. So if we remember our ls command, which lists everything in our current directory, we type in ls we put in our pipe wc l and that counts every single file in our directory now what if we want to sort those listings so we type ls l pipe sort arrow sorted listing dot text and we just sorted everything now that we've created this file, we can just do an lsla forward slash grep text pipe wc l. And what that is doing is it finds and it counts how many text files are in that current directory. So, as you can see from running these few commands in the terminal, you understand now how to pipe one command to the other. And you can use pipes for so many different things. It's so powerful. We're going to move on to the basic sort of system information of Linux, how that is important in your daily life. So one command we're going to move on to is who am I? Now, I think that might be self-explanatory to a lot of people, but that shows who you are. So if you're logged in as root or if you're logged in as your own personal user account, it tells you. And reason why this is important is sometimes you might be running commands and they may not work because you may not have the right access. Let's take another example. Let's say you have an application running and you're running at disk space. How can you quickly check that? You type in df-h, which gives you the disk space usage in a readable format. 
tells you how much is used, how much you have available, and where it's mounted. And sometimes you might find where maybe a VM has crashed over the weekend or has crashed during office hours. Um, some of your service is taking a bit of a hit. So you want to check, has that service been alive a long time? Has that server passed away? So you can type in uptime and see how long that server has been awake. Now moving on to section eight, we're going to be focusing on network essentials. So what if we want to see the network interfaces currently on our server? That's very simple. IP ADDR show. And that shows us everything that is on our interface. Now I'm running this on a Docker container, so you're gonna see the network within Docker. If you wanna test connectivity to another machine, we can use ping, so let's ping Google. And there we go, we have our reply. So we know connectivity of this machine is able to go out to the public internet. And remember from our earlier command, if you're doing some troubleshooting, maybe you wanna share some network information with one of your colleagues, but they don't have access to this machine, or you need to share it with a client. Very simply, we can output that connection to a file, then you can export it and save it over to them. So we've played around with a lot of files, created files, changed files names, there's a lot of output, but what about when you wanna find things? Which is what we're gonna do in section nine. So let's say we wanna find files by name, very simply. And what if you don't actually know the name of that file though, right? We're well, gonna do a wildcard in it. So let's take a look at our text files that we've created. There's all of them, every single text file you need. And that's good, we've found a load of files in a bunch of different directories. What if we wanna find certain information within those files? Well, that's when the next, probably the first, maybe second most important command to use behind a pipe, I think the two of them are probably arguably the best, it's called grep. Now, grep allows us to search inside files for different information. So we type in grep, error, app.log, we find it. But grep can do a lot more different things. So we could do grep-n application app.log, and that lists all the information with numbers as well. What if we want to find a bunch of those files and output them? We can do that as well. Find name wildcard dot text find dot text and then we've just taken everything that we find, outputted it to a new file, and we can share that with anyone we need to. Now section ten we're gonna be moving on to is process management. And the command we're gonna run first is PS alt, which is gonna show us all of the running processes that we have on our current machine. Is it when they started, what it is, who's using it, and what if we wanna show real-time activity? We can press top, and this shows us everything that's happening in real time. And if you wanna exit out here, it's just control C. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine some of our previous commands we've learned. So we're gonna show all of our processes, pipe them to grep, look for bash. And there we have it. We found bash from piping our process command using grep to find that one process. You have to imagine when you're in a production environment, you can have a lot of processes running and you might have different accounts doing that. So it's finding ways to find that information as quick as possible. And then what we can do is use other commands that we've done. So let's take a look at our processes again. We have them here, but that's great. I need to send these to our systems engineer who's on leave. So I want to back this up because he's going to be in the next day and I want to see what it is because he may be able to help me figure out these problems. So we'll call it a process snapshot. We'll cat it. There we go, that file saved. The last section is gonna be more focused towards a practical scenario. So I'm just gonna dump all of this information in. And what this is doing is essentially creating like a dummy system health report that uses redirection and multiple commands, exactly how it would look in a real cloud environment. Now, if we take a look at that file, and we'll scroll up, everything we've input has come out. So we've used a variety of different commands, like who am I, 
we've checked the disk usage, the system load, and running processes and created it as one file. Now, if you practice these 18 commands, it's a large percentage of daily sort of system administration tasks that you would carry out. And you're gonna be using these commands all the time. These aren't commands that you just learn once and don't use again. And the key is consistent practice. Like I'm not expecting you to memorize these commands straight away, but consistently being in Linux using these commands, you're gonna start eventually memorizing them. And you don't need to memorize everything, remember? Like I've been in engineering for the past six years, um, in technology 10 years, I still Google commands here and there um, and forget things. It's absolutely fine. But don't worry if you're struggling to remember every command, but these ones, like in an interview for a junior engineer, like someone may say to you, how can you read a Linux file without opening it? And you say, oh, I would use the cat command. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.